The principle behind spring pole well drilling is very simple. A long pole acts as a spring-loaded lever to raise drill tools upward after they have been pulled manually downward. The well is drilled slightly deeper each time the drill bit strikes the bottom of the borehole. Welcome to Construction Technique. In this video, we are going to talk about pole drilling, so stick with us to the very end. But before we make it to the video, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications to get notified whenever we upload a new video. The U.S. Bureau of Mines produced a silent movie in the early 1900s, demonstrating different methods of oil well drilling and the technological progress that has been made since the Drake well was drilling in 1859. Included in that movie was a scene demonstrating spring pole well drilling. The well-known photo shown above is a still frame from that movie. In percussion drilling operations, some mechanism was needed for letting out more drilling line or lowering the drill rods and allowing the hole to be made deeper. The elongation winch or slipper out used with the Canadian type rigs could let out a chain to lower the string of drill rods. The American standard rig held the drilling line in a cable clamp and deepened the borehole by slowly backing out a heavily threaded frame known as the temper screw which was carried on the front end of the walking beam. The spring pole rig is a very simple homemade version of the temper screw. A long steel plate is drilled through with holes every few inches along its length. The bottom end of the plate has a clevis for attaching the drilling line with a hitch knot. Enough extra line is let out to allow the entire plate to be lowered toward the borehole as the hole is gradually drilled deeper. The plate could be put through a slot in the spring pole or mounted to the side of the spring pole and held in place with a bolt or steel pin. When the tools needed to be lowered during drilling, the pin holding the temper screw in place was pulled out and placed through a higher hole in the plate. When the temper screw was drilled up to the top hole in the plate, the tools were pulled from the hole and the debris removed with a baler. After baling, the drilling tools were run back into the bottom of the borehole. The place was repinned to the spring hole starting at the lowest hole. The hitch knot was loosened and enough drilling line was played out to allow the entire temper screw to be used. Drilling could resume after retightening the hitch knot. Manual percussive drilling was used for drilling at more substantial depths and especially for advancing the borehole through harder rocks than it was possible to reach by hand digging. Hand digging placed workers at the bottom of the well with shovels, pickaxes and buckets and it was very risky to dig over 250 to 330 feet because of the risk of structural failures, heat and lack of oxygen. In the United States, early percussion drilling for salt brine deposits mixed with petroleum are recorded at the beginning of the 19th century. Excavations were propelled by a man kicking into a rope loop or jumping on a spring-loaded platform. Through this movement, bamboo or wood rods attached onto the lower side of a chisel-like cast iron drill bit, the cutting tool, were raised and dropped on the solid rock. Progress was slow depending on the hardness of the rock. A day's drilling might have advanced the borehole a foot. Despite that, this system called spring pole dominated petroleum finding in North America until the late 1850s. The shift from salt to petroleum happened largely because the spring pole technology was so well diffused and rooted. The practice of drilling became a profession composed of full-time and skilled drillers and the early petroleum harvesting and distillation industry begun from these salt wells that were contaminated with petroleum. In the States, the transfer of salt drilling technologies to a petroleum landmark region was the Kanawha Valley. In a wider geographical contest, it is possible to localize the petroleum to salt paradigm in the Appalachian region, particularly in West Virginia and Western Pennsylvania, and to a lesser extent in Northwest Ohio and Southern Ontario. The early records about the spring pole used in salt finding with contamination of oil reports approximately 2.5 inch diameter percussion bits attached to a spring pole by a rope, which stabbed up and down in the soil. The completion of a well was implemented by using a wood casing, hollow trunk, into the hole to prevent loss of mineral rising in the borehole. The spring pole rig consisted of a tough, springy young log, 40 to 50 feet long, anchored at an angle to a firm locking base made of stones and ropes called a dead man. The tip of the log was above the hole and the drilling tools were suspended by a rope from the tip of the log. Other ropes were attached to the tip of the pole and when the well drillers pulled down on these ropes, the drilling tools fell into the hole. When they released the rope, the spring of the pole lifted the tools. The spring pole generally was anchored at an angle of about 30 degrees, but sometimes it was placed in an almost horizontal position. Originally, the workmen pulled it down on hand ropes attached to the pole, but they soon used stirrup loops on the ropes and kicked it down. During its lifespan, the basic mechanic principle of the spring pole remained the same, but various changes were made in its mode of operation. 
For example, the bit chisel used for percussive drilling took the form of an auger used to implement a rotation system by means of the drilling string, the cable often made by manila hemp rope used in place of the wooden rods. The rotation motion was affected by hand twisting of the iron wood rods or rope. Another advancement in the spring pole technology was the devising of the teeter-totter platform with one end of the platform suspended by ropes from the spring pole. By shifting their stance back and forth, the workmen used the teetering platform to operate the spring pole. Various methods of attaching winches and cables to lift the tools were also conceived. Throughout the years, the spring pole was also used together with the steel drilling bit, the drive pipe and even the early packer, an artifact used to shut off unwanted flow of fluid into the well. In the 1830s, drilling apparatuses using spring poles could be said to be portable in the sense that the spring pole and its impediments could be disassembled and re-erected at a new site. Heavy metal and hard wood tools were difficult to carry just by mean of human and animal labor into inaccessible lands, often not crossed by real roads. The spring pole system also found use in some petroleum fields in Romania. The rod was balanced on a Samson post resembling the T-shape of a walking beam. At the top of the rod, the worker kicked down the drill string, rope or chain and the chisel. The bottom of the rod used a stone to counterbalance the kicking of the worker and secured to the dead man with a rope. The rope was long enough to allow the oscillatory motion of the rod. At the end of the run, the recoil imposed by the rope facilitated the ascension of the chisel. This calculated use of counterweights allowed the spring pole to be operated by just a single worker. The spring pole rig was still used in the early oil industry until the early 1860s before it was replaced by the most rapid and efficient steam-powered derrick-mounted mechanical systems working by means of walking beam. Hybrid mechanical spring pole systems were patented by the 1870s. A tripod derrick, a common mast in the Canadian field and then widely used in Eastern Europe and Australia, was powered by a vertical boiler steam engine. The entire unit was compact and portable on wheels. The spring pole was attached to the removable dead man anchored to the ground. A rigid beam pivoted on a Samson post attached at the end of the rig chassis permitted the entire unit to be wheel-mounted. Some of the earliest oil wells in Canada were dug using spring poles. A pole rested on a fulcrum point and had one side secured to the ground. A sharpened tool was attached to rods, which were suspended from the pole over a well. The rods and tool were repeatedly raised and dropped to deepen the hole. During the Turner Valley period, there were two types of drilling rigs used, the cable tool drill rig and rotary tool drill rigs. Cable tool drill rigs developed from spring pole technology. The sharpened tool was attached to a series of rods or cables which were attached to an upright derrick, initially made of wood but later of steel. Steam power was used to repeatedly lift and drop the tool. Cable tool drill rigs were particularly effective in smashing their way through hard geological formations. They were more efficient and stronger than spring poles, but well drilling was still a long and laborious process. It took a two- or three-man crew working in almost continual shifts, months or even years, to drill wells deep enough to reach the oil and gas reservoirs. Cable tool rigs and derricks were extremely dangerous. Most of the work was done in a small cellar under the derrick which could fill with released poisonous hydrogen sulfide gas or H2S. The deeper the well was dug, the more rope or steel cable was needed, which placed considerable strain on the derricks. Derrick collapses were not frequent, but they did occur, often with catastrophic consequences for the drill crews. Fire, which was fed by oil-soaked equipment and derricks, was also an ever-present danger. All right, everyone, this brings us to the end of our video. Thanks for watching. More interesting videos are coming, and if you don't want to miss out any of our videos, then smash the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you will always be updated.